You're listening to Klaus and Company. I'm Nick Boykin speaking with Dr. Mike Milligan, a dentist specialized in sleep as well as an entrepreneur and author. Are a lot of dentists sleep specialists, Dr. Milligan, or is that just something specific to your personal practice? Well, it's becoming more and more a thing in dentistry. You know, the uh, roof of the mouth is the same bone as the floor of the nose. And so the possibility for dentistry to impact the airway is really large. Also, of course, we deal with the tongue and other oral structures. And so more and more dentistry becomes involved in helping the people with airway concerns, which would include snoring and sleep apnea. Other than being annoying for loved ones and significant others, what is snoring and what causes it? Well, snoring can be the result of several factors, but typically it's caused when the muscles or the tissues relax in the throat and the mouth, making the airway passage smaller, and then that decrease in space through the airway, as air tries to move through that, some of those tissues can vibrate. And that's what causes snoring. It's kind of like blowing up a balloon, but not tying it off. And then as you let that air out of the balloon, you hear a vibrating noise. The same thing happens in your airway passage in causing snoring. And then that, of course, that can move into things like sleep apnea and other problems. Definitely. And are there any health concerns with snoring? I know you mentioned sleep apnea, and we'll get to that momentarily, but are there other you know, health concerns no, with it? No real health concerns, although it's very annoying. <laughs> uh, you know, I have um, a patient who's a leader in a local large church, and they do mission work down in Haiti. And so he goes with groups, and they, and they build homes down there for, for those people. And... He came to me with a snoring problem, and he said he just gets, no one wants to be with him. No one wants to be near him. We constructed an oral appliance for him, helped him with some breathing retraining, and now he says it is no problem whatsoever. Another example, I have a a young fellow, 42-year-old young man who came to me, no longer sleeping in the same bedroom as his wife. At that age, that's just a terrible thing. And again, we were able to help him with his snoring problem and and get him and his wife back together in the same bedroom. So as far as health concerns from snoring itself, not really a problem. But the thing is, if you do snore, don't just move forward with some online treatment for snoring or over-the-counter treatment for snoring or, or think that it's nothing because... Many, many, a large percentage of snores, up to 60 to 80 percent, actually either have or move into sleep apnea, which does have very serious health concerns. So so you really want to get a a sleep test if you snore. Snoring in kids is an absolute no-no. Kids should not snore at all. They they definitely need to be treated for that. If if, uh, an adult snores, definitely get a sleep test to see if you have or are close to having obstructive sleep apnea. Now that we've moved to the topic of sleep apnea, you know, what, what is sleep apnea and what are the common issues that you see with it? Well, again, it's similar to snoring except it's gone to the next level. Obstructive sleep apnea occurs when your breathing regularly stops. That's called an apnea when it's totally obstructed or slowed. That's called a hypopnea. For, and, and this has to happen for 10 seconds or longer. Typically, it's, typically it's 20 seconds. Imagine just holding your breath for uh, 15 to 20 seconds and doing this many times an hour. Now, in obstructive sleep apnea, if this happens less than five times an hour, we say that's normal. Or the, If it happens five to 15 times an hour, that's mild. 15 to 30 times an hour is moderate, and above 30 is severe. The, there, there are many problems with that. If you uh, try that, uh, just hold your breath for 20 seconds, and then imagine doing that for 10, 15, 20, 30. I, I recently had a patient doing that 130 times an hour. He, he was, 
he was on his way to some severe health problems. How, how common is sleep apnea, and how dangerous of a medical issue is it? Well, it's very common, and 95% are undiagnosed. Up to, say, 20% or more of people actually have sleep apnea. For instance, truckers, the number that I've seen is 25 to 30%. Imagine that, 25 to 30% of truckers having sleep apnea, they're out on the road, and some of the problems that sleep apnea cause are tiredness and less oxygen to the body. For instance, if you have obstructive sleep apnea, you're four times as likely to have a heart attack. You're three to four times as likely to have a stroke. You're three times as likely, three to five times as likely to develop diabetes. Uh, You're twice as likely to die in in your sleep and three to seven times more likely to have a motor vehicle accident. So uh, 40% greater risk of depression. There are a lot of problems with sleep apnea. Who's more prone to it? I know you mentioned truckers, but are, are there certain people that are prone more to getting sleep apnea? Obese people. People who are overweight, of course, have more tissue. Well, with more tissue anywhere in your body, your airway, it just has tissue surrounding it, so there's more fatty tissue there as well. People who have smaller jaws, who have classed what we call um, the, the upper or lower jaw isn't as big, are much more prone to having sleep apnea. Sadly, people who have had um, four teeth taken out, the bicuspids premolars in orthodontics, we see uh, become more prone to sleep apnea. They get straighter teeth, but now we know as this is becoming more and more a field related to dentistry, sleep apnea, we know that they are more prone to sleep apnea. So certain segments of the population are more prone. So, so we look at things like that. People with uh, obstructions in their uh, nose or uh, airway posterior airway can be more prone to sleep apnea. What are ways people can prevent their sleep apnea and also get help for this condition if they believe they have it? There are several potential treatments for sleep apnea that can help. One is just sleep hygiene, and that's doing the right things before you go to sleep, which would be not drinking alcohol. Typically, not smoking is is a good thing for all health concerns, including this. But for an hour to a half hour, no TV, no computer, uh, get the right temperature, a little cooler temperature in the room. So sleep hygiene is one thing. You can look at online or over-the-counter remedies, but typically they're they're not that great. Lifestyle changes such as losing weight and exercise to just decrease the fatty tissue in your airway is something that's important. Then we move on into therapies. Actually, breathing training can be significant by learning to reduce the amount of air necessary through exercises or the frequency of breathing, reducing that, can help with snoring and sleep apnea. We move into muscle retraining. Retraining, it's called oral facial myology, which oral is the mouth, facial is the face, so the, uh, around the mouth and the face, Myology is muscle function, so helping uh, to retrain the muscles of the tongue and lips uh, and and breathing, keeping the lips together. Mouth breathers typically are going to have smaller jaws and more restrictions in the airway, more problems with that. We can then move on into the, the big three treatments of sleep apnea which would be an oral appliance or a CPAP machine or surgery. Surgery is always the last resort. Oral appliances are becoming more and more a big part of this. People, most, About half the people just don't find that they can use a CPAP machine. So oral appliances are becoming more and more important. There are several types. Some are called mandibular advancement, mandible being the lower jaw. We help to move the lower jaw forward, about 100 different types of those. But more recently, what we're doing is actually expanding the jaws. I'm actually doing this for myself. I, I don't even have sleep apnea, but I'm improving my airway again 
the bone of the roof of the mouth is the same bone as the floor of the nose. So as you expand that jaw, you're expanding your airway. In doing that, you're also able to bring that lower jaw, have it move forward, which, again, opens up the airway in the back of the throat. Very important. The real opportunity, and I'm actually in Los Angeles at a course for this right now, is kids. If we can catch kids in the 5- to 10-year-old age, we, when their jaws are developing, we can actually help them develop their jaws properly, posture their jaws properly, help them with their breathing so that they breathe properly and with their oral structures and function, their tongue, their lips. Uh, be sure that they breathe through their nose. The nose was meant to breathe. The mouth was meant for eating. And so those things in kids is the real opportunity to prevent these things before they ever start. Is airways, especially in your field, an underappreciated health concern by many? Oh, absolutely. And it's, it's becoming, there's much more research happening in this field. But, you know, you can, you can live for days without food, uh, excuse me, weeks without food, days without water, but only a few minutes without air. Breathing is the most important function as humans that we do. And we're beginning to realize, we are realizing how important this is both in medicine and dentistry, but now we are seeing as the dental profession just the role that we can have both in treating this, it is what we do every day, the oral facial structures, as well as preventing this in kids. In my office, we do both oral appliances, mandibular advancement devices, we expand the jaws, we do breathing retraining, we are trained oral facial myologists for the uh, improving the function and training the function of the tongue and the lips, keeping the lips together when you breathe, breathe through the nose, proper positioning of the tongue, which should be on the roof of your mouth at all times, except for eating, of course, drinking. But uh, so much can be done about this. Now, I have many videos on a website that I have put up for patients, many short videos about this. The website is www.oralsystemiclink.net. Thank you, Dr. Milligan. Thank uh-huh. you again to Dr. Mike Milligan, a dentist specialized in sleep as well as an entrepreneur and author. This is Klaus and Company on WFSS.